Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Michael V with a final episode of my 1951 Mercury lead sled project. Hey, while the car was out at paint, I took all the parts and pieces and bumpers over to Leo at Superior Metal Polishing in Palmdale, California. His work is awesome. Here's the car back from paint, and first order of business was to put the grill letters or the hood letters back on. This were from a 1949 Mercury one year only. That way you can see what it is. Next up was the grill teeth. Look at Leo's work. Unbelievable. They came out beautiful. I can't thank him enough. And same goes for all the bumper work and, and everything else he did. Next up was the headlights. I got some LEDs from my friend Peter at All Terrain Concepts out in the Simi Valley. Put those on with the Oldsmobile headlight rings. Looking pretty good. Now we've got side trim going on. Things are going to start to get real interesting now. Here's a few shots of the side trim. And as you can see, we progress down the, down the side of the car. Next up will be the skirts with the teeth that were modified from a 54 Mercury. Those are looking pretty good. Makes those skirts stand out a lot more than they did before, huh? Last, we're going to put the rear bumper on. That's all Frenched in looking beautiful. All this work is starting to pay off nicely, nicely. Next step, we got to finish up the interior panels and get ready to go to interior. Here we go out in the sun with the DeSoto tail lights in place, looking pretty beautiful. Next up, I wanted to have some pinstriping done, so I reached out to a guy named Chewy. Chewy owns El Chewy Pinstriping. He's based up in the Antelope Valley also, and I had him dial in some of the highlights of the car, like the trunk lid here and the sides uh, of the spears. You'll see he highlighted all this. This is the hood. Here's the name of the car, Blue Rapture. And then finally, traditionally, you got to put your girl's name on the love box. I did this, make good points. Time to load it up on the trailer and get it down to Oxnard, California with Jose at a Pacific Upholstery. Holy smokes, here's his work. This guy's on his game too. Look at this, this is the first pictures of it with the top off and the interior in place. Here's the top, look what he did to the inside of the headliner. I asked him to match everything. This is very, very traditional 50s style, and he, he hit it right on the nail on the head. As you can see, he did um, piping all around the seats. He's got all the, all the tucks and everything done the right way. This thing just came out beautiful. Here it is in front of his shop with the top all done, also outside all padded, done up the right way, full-blown Carson top. Next up will be the glass. These chop top cars don't ventilate well, so I wanted to do something different with the wind wings. Here's the start. What I ended up doing was taking some out of a four-door Mercury, the rear doors, flipping them around so they open the wrong way, which is actually going to let air into the car. They came out great. While the glass was out being cut, I went to Gene Winfield's shop and met up with my buddy Craig so we could start working on the stainless trim, the final pieces for the car that will go around the windshield and also on the bottom of the top where the actual door glass is going to seal up. This is what we ended up with after I polished it and installed it and it came out beautiful um, with the, the rubber trim that's on after, after these pictures it came out great. Here's what the car started as. Remember this? And here's where we're at today. Pretty close to being 100% done. I'm going to take you for a walk around it now. Hey everyone, it's Michael V with the 1951 Mercury Lead Sled and here's the final installment for you. Now you get to see the face behind the voice. Now I'm going to take a quick walk around the car and show you what these, what, what's done with it and how it's all completed. Okay, now we're going to do a final walk around on this car. So this started out as a 1951 Mercury. It's been heavily modified. This is considered a custom. That's spelled with a K. This was a traditional car that would have been built in the late 50s and you would have seen at shows. And there's quite a few modifications to it. I'm going to talk about them a little bit and just kind of give you some an overall view of what this thing looks like in the end, what it takes to build this. This is a six year project. The reason it took so long is just trying to find all the parts to make it what it is. So this is considered a traditional lead sled. Lead sleds are a derogatory term from hot rod guys back in the 50s. They didn't like guys with these cars. And the reason they call them lead sleds is back in the 50s when you did body modifications, there was no plastic body filler available. So all the craftsmen used lead. This, ha this car actually has a lot of lead in it. So it is, tr it is considered a true lead sled. So let's start out with the front. 
Got the uh, 1953 DeSoto front bumper. The bolts were shaved on it, and then the bumper was re-chromed. The grill teeth are all handmade. Those, those come from a 1951 Ford F1 pickup truck. There's generally only three teeth per, pit for, per truck, so it, it took a while to find these. Then I had to plate the side of them, weld them all together, and then have them re-chromed. Front letters on the hood. These are off a 1949 Mercury. Those are one year only. Most people would shave those off. But I like people to know what kind of car this is when it's coming at them. The uh, turn directionals, those come off a shoebox, which would be a 50s Ford car. And the headlights are off of a, they're off a uh, Oldsmobile, 1955 Oldsmobile. They're slightly hooded, as you can see right here from this view. That gives the car a little bit of extra length and, and uh, style. The hood, the front hood corners are rounded. Those used to be square as are the rear hood corners. Those have been rounded too. So you'll see that right here. Okay, we also did traditional 50s French in the, the uh, antenna in and then added some lead to, uh, to wake it up with some pinstriping too. The side here, these fender lips are not stock. Those are off a 53 Ford car. So I found some fenders, cut the fender lips off and, and welded those in. It gives the front fenders a little more definition in my opinion. Most guys run Cadillac hubcaps because that was what you needed to do in the 50s to be cool. Most guys, if you, got the, if you had a Cadillac, you got the girls. Um, so when they did custom cars, it was a lot less expensive to buy than a Cadillac, and they would put Cadillac caps on it. That's why most guys run those. It's a little history for you. Took me a long time to get all this correct. Okay, moving down the side of the car here. This trim is off a 1955 Pontiac Safari station wagon two-door version. Super hard to find. I found it and was able to modify it to fit the Mercury door. It just has the proper bend for the Mercury door and that dip and it looks awesome. I had a guy pinstripe the, uh, the uh, accents on the, on the trim too to make it look like it's moving. And then I wanted locking door handles. So these door handles are from a 54 Chevy. The rule of thumb when you were building customs back in the day was you needed to have the same year or newer year parts on it to make it uh, in the shows and to make it worthwhile. These skirts are extra long. These are handmade uh, wheel covers. That they are removable so I can change flats. And then I added spears from a 1954 Mercury on it. And these are modified to fit these skirts the right way. So we'll keep moving around the side here. The rear end, there was a ton of work done back here. So just in front of the gas tank door is the part of the fender that I grafted into the car. And this was off a 1955 DeSoto. I found a guy that was part one out and just cut the whole rear end of the car off. Luckily for me, he had the bumper, the tail lights, and all the widgets and goodies that came with it. So I was able to get all that from the guy. The rear bumper, I shaved six inches or cut six inches out of each side of it. So the rear bumper is actually a foot narrower than it was from the original DeSoto. These cars have a, a shape that kind of boat tails to the back, as you'll see here in just a moment. The other thing that most guys did in the 50s was they would shave the trunk lids, make it smooth. I wanted mine to wake up a little bit, so I got a uh, license plate holder, and this is off a 51 Ford car also. It seems to wake the trunk up. We added a bunch of lead to it. Actually, Craig did, Craig Gilliam. and. Uh, to, uh, to, to wake it up a little bit. It gives it a, a nice nice setup here. Here's some traditional 50s pinstriping that you would normally see back in the day. You can see that all this is lead and this is all peaked. So lots and lots of work there. Okay, the trunk lid, same thing. Rounded the corners right here, that's another thing you do. Makes the car look, makes it flow right, and gives it good symmetry. You can also see this rear bumper was Frenched in, meaning it's smooth pushed up against the body real nice. It's like a pocket. That's how it was done back in the day to make it look the right way. The color on this car is unbelievable in the sun. It still shocks me even to this day to sort of sort of look at it. I've had it painted for probably almost a year now. So the top, this is a uh, traditional Carson top. This is completely removable. So I can roll this, this car uh, with the top off and and have uh, the same thing as a convertible, and then I can also put the top back on. There are windows that slide into the top when I want to run side windows, and uh, 
that works good. Right now, I don't need them. Um, it, it seems to, to be very comfortable to, uh, to drive around the way it is. This will give you a pretty good idea of the, of the angle of this car and what they're supposed to look like. You should be sitting a little bit low in the back. Give it that boat tail or boat stance. That's how it's supposed to be. Now I'm gonna go back and show you the inside. Now that we're all complete with the inside, last thing I need to do is some trim around the windows, windshield on the rear window, but that'll be for another day. So go ahead and open this up. So the door panels, this is traditional for the 50s, uh, two-tone pleats, and then uh, the window crank and door, door handles are stock 51 Mercury, and uh, they've, been, they've been pinstriped to match. And for those of you that are old school, for my speaker covers, you know what those are. Those are off a drive-in movie speaker. And these I found in the wrecking yard. These are off a uh, 60s Mercedes, these armrests. They work real good and they fit the car the right way. By the way, this separation trim right here, pretty hard to find that. That's off a 1954 Studebaker Lark. And I modified all that to work for the car too. So... Again, it took a while just to find all the parts and study up on this and figure out what what was right and what wasn't right. You want to certainly do this traditional and custom. Okay, so in the back, got a traditional 60s T-Bird rear wraparound seat with a stainless polished center console that John Hare and I made one day. That's in one of the videos. And right over there in the on the side, you're going to see a release for the top. That releases the top there. And this release the top right here these handles go so right there okay the rear this front seats these are out of a 370zx Nissan they've been modified obviously to make to look like they're supposed to be in early 50s uh, they're full power makes it kind of nice when you're driving around remember seeing the center console that's all handmade and then this is a nice little gift my wife got for me for the shifter. We've got the microphone shift knob. Coming over to the steering wheel, that's a 60s Impala steering wheel. Pretty traditional for these cars. I painted it two-tone to match the car. And the big deal with this, if you're going to build a full-on Mercury, you have to have a 49 dash. They made these cars 1949 to 1951. 1949 is one year only dash. Super hard to find, very expensive. Um, worth it in the end when you do it. We also added the lower uh, balance right here across. Um, that was handmade to uh, house the uh, AC and heat vents and then hide the AC unit and the heat unit and all that stuff. The original radio in it. Pause for a second so you kind of get an idea. That other piece that's on the dash that looks like it's a piece of glass, that was a, a accessory in the 50s that people used. So you could actually see street lights when you're at a stoplight because you cannot see them when you're in this car. Last but not least, gotta give props to my girl. This is what they did in the 50s traditional. They put the girl's name on the glove box. So she's the one who helped me with this. Backed me up 100% over six years. And uh, here we go. We have a car we can have a really good time in. Go cruise it, be traditional, and just have a, have a good time in this thing. So in the future, I'll, I'll be sending some videos, put some more videos up of actually going to shows and cruising once, uh, once this COVID is all over. And uh, everybody can uh, can get out and start start seeing each other again. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something too.